to Hampstead Parish Church on this first Sunday after Trinity. This service will be coming from the Book of Common Prayer. Welcome to those in church and those who are on the Facebook Live. We are uh, a scattered community united in worship this morning. Let us pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Collect, Epistle and Gospel of the first Sunday after Trinity. O God, the strength of all them that put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without thee, Grant us the help of thy grace, that in keeping of thy commandments we may please thee both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle of St. John, beginning at the seventh verse. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God towards us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, 
because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. There was a certain man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they who would pass from hence to you cannot neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldst send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, if they hear not Moses, not the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen.
1 John chapter 4, our epistle reading today, could be the stuff of fridge fridge magnets and greetings cards. It seems to repeat the word love so much that it becomes slightly sweet and uh, give us a general kind of warm sense that God is love and where there is love and lovely things around, then there will be God. John is, in fact, much more sharp, much more pointed, and much more um, determined to be a teacher here than that general sense of isn't love lovely. And isn't God lovely? He's addressing people in churches where there has been immense dissension, great difficulty. And he's speaking within that contested time where there is violence and persecution, where there is complexity. And in such cases where people then oppose one another and are violent towards each other, even those who bear the same name and who bear the name of Christ. He's almost uh, agonised in what he's saying here. How can you say that God is love? How can you say that in Christ is found light, life, redemption and hope? How can you say that and believe that if you are not then exercising that one to another? And where love is love, it transcends barriers and boundaries. Where love is love, as we have seen in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is sacrifice. If you are to say that God is love and you are living in love, says John, that needs to be cashed out, lived out, enacted, shown in your lives. The warm feeling, and of course, that's an aspect of love. The warm feeling needs to be translated into will, and action, life. John's wrestling here because he knows that belief in Christ, being baptised into Christ's death and resurrection, means that in one sense, in eternal terms, we are made perfect. We are ready at the day of judgment. We will be because God sees Christ in us, the hope of glory. Yet in temporal terms, he sees people who are not living that out. And therefore comes up with this phrase about God's love being perfected in us. Not as it were, made even better than it was at the start. But our lives being so perfected that they exemplify all in all the love of God. The eternal love is made plain in uh, the temporal acts, our temporal loving one of another. We rejoice that God is in us by the Holy Spirit in Christ. And that that means, as John puts it, as Jesus puts it, at the last judgment, we are in Christ. But we treat that with contempt if we do not do everything we can to enable that love to grow in us and to put to death all the things in our humanity, all the things in us which would 
sully it, overturn it, make it wrong. And so we strain everything to press on, to enable God's love to be perfected in us, to be shown and seen. These are complex days for our community, our nation and our world. Above all, we need to express the sacrificial, compassionate, ever-giving love of God one to another in patience and compassion and generosity and service. May we so know the love of God who loves even us that we overflow with that love in practical and detailed terms one to another. And especially where there is dissension and difficulty, where there is division and brokenness, to recognize that the same love of God dwells in us as them. And stretch out a hand and look for life. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. In our pattern of prayer, we pray in Hampstead Parish Church for all involved in our work with and among children. Praying especially for Maureen and giving thanks for the uh, workshops which took place this week. Among our local churches, we pray for St Andrew's Frognal and in our supported charities for the work of sight savers. In this Diocese of London, we pray for the Archdeacon of Middlesex and all in the diocese involved in sport. In the Porvo Communion of Northern European churches, we pray for the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Iceland and the Spanish Reformed Episcopal Church and in the Anglican Communion for the province of Myanmar. Among those who are ill, we continue our prayers for Iris Terwilliger, Dayton Dewey, Ted Pleasance, Nicholas Gendel, Steve, Robert Hatch, Ruth Harper, Monique Parsons, and Alison Penny. 
We remember those who have died recently, remembering Kate Haste, whose funeral was last Wednesday, and Mary Port of this congregation, whose funeral is this coming Wednesday. In our year's mind, we remember Marjorie Davis and Jackie Woodman. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take these holy sacraments to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail <clears throat> manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, 
that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John says, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again, Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, Grant us thy peace. We receive communion by bread alone. I'll stand just at the foot of the step here. You're able to come up keeping that suitable distance uh, and then return to your seats down by the side of the organ that will enable the flow. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith, with thanksgiving.
As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. <clears throat> Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our worship continues today with a service of Holy Communion at 11 o'clock uh, in church and on Zoom and on Facebook Live and Choral Evensong at 5 o'clock this afternoon uh, again on Zoom and on Facebook Live. Uh, next week we are preparing for, <clears throat> or we will be preparing through the week for a, a commemoration of the life of Evelyn Underhill, a uh, Christian uh, writer and mystic spiritual guide and teacher. Um, who has had a remarkable uh, effect on um, the spiritual life of the church across the world. Her 80th anniversary of her death is on June the 15th, and we're marking it by uh, enabling her grave uh, to speak more of her work. We're having a special stone commemorated. Uh, the inscription, as you'll see uh, in the little display in the lobby, uh, doesn't make it very obvious that it's her, and so we're doing that. Um, next Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, uh, the Right Reverend, uh, the Lord Harris of Pentregarth, Richard Harris, the former uh, curate <coughs> here in the 1960s, and former Bishop of Oxford, is preaching. And in the evening, uh, Ayla Lapine uh, is preaching. That will be at 6 o'clock next Sunday evening. Uh, just uh, enables Ayla to preach uh, the Oxford University sermon in the morning uh, and gets here for the evening. So Evelyn Underhill, uh, a week today on the 13th, <coughs> of June. Uh, we're commemorating it, her on the day by uh, dedicating the stone on her grave. The, the grave is up towards the columbarium if you'd like to go and see. <clears throat> uh, we continue uh, our evening prayer through the week on Zoom at five o'clock Monday to Thursday. Uh, all are welcome to join that. Do look out for uh, other ways in which we will be uh, opening up our church life uh, through the week. I'm grateful that our volunteers are enabling the church to be open between 10 and 2 uh, each day as the lockdown begins to lift. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.